Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Medzone African Motives. Uh, we are still on our Electrotechnics Info, working with our revisions, and this is our DC machines. So we are given the first part that you're going to consider, which is our theory part Then, 3.1, briefly explain the following methods of self-excited field coils connections. All right, so we are given 3.11, which is the shunt connected, 3.12 the series, 3.13, which is the compound connected. So the question is explain the following methods. So you need to explain like what is happening in each of these methods that you're given, the connections uh, that we are having there. So we shall just quickly uh, look into all of these three. So the first part, which was a shunt, a shunt connected machine as its field coils connected in parallel with the armature. So that is the most important part. Remember, uh, if you are in a shunt that is a parallel connection, then a series connected machine as its field connected, uh, field coils connected in series with the armature. And for a compound connected machine is a combination of a shunt and a series machine. So meaning to say it can be series parallel. That is the combination of uh, uh, the two, the shunt and the series at the same time. So this is what you were given on this part. All right, 3.2, we are given, give three reasons why the shunt generator may fail to excite. And that is three marks for that. Why is it that uh, a DC generator can fail to excite? So we can have one, the field coils may be connected incorrectly. So if they are connected incorrectly, then it can fail to excite. And also the iron core of the pole pieces may have lost their residual magnetism. The brushes may be jammed in their holders. So in that consideration, it is gonna affect the brushes or the commutator may be dirty. They may be an open or short-circuited field circuit or a loose brush connection, which can also affect our DC, uh, I mean, our DC generator or the shunt uh, generator to excite. In that condition, uh, we are going to have a failure in the excitation of our uh, shunt generator. All right, 3.3, .3, we are given a DC generator is an armature of 100 volts with a flux, a pole, and the armature speed. All right. Then we are given on 3.31 to calculate the EMF width. So if you are to consider there, we are still calculating the EMF. But what just happened are the conditions that has changed. So I talked about this on the introduction of uh, the generated EMF equation. All right, remember I say that if you're given these conditions when the same DC generator that you're working with, but only that conditions have changed, we are going to use uh, the relationship. Remember the relationship that is E is actually equal to K times N times flux, which is given from the, uh, the EMF being proportional to the speed and the flux. So with this condition, it follows that if you are to consider the first condition and the second condition, it follows that E1 over E2 is equal to, remember the constant and the constant are the same, so they will cancel. So you're gonna have N1 uh, flux one over N2 flux two. So this was the condition that we are supposed to actually work with because you are given initially that is the DC generator that we have it has uh, the armature EMF of 100 volts that is our E1 so this is initially at 100 volts uh, when the flux per pore is 20 milliwebers so we are given uh, the flux per pole then the armature speed which is 800 revs per minute so we are also given initially so this is 800 uh, revs per minute. So the EMF at the second condition, this is the one that you need to calculate. 
So considering that you're supposed to calculate E2, but what are the conditions now with the same flux? So the first thing that you're given is the flux two is equal to flux one, but the amateur speed of 1000, the speed it is the one that has changed to 1000 uh, revolutions per minute. But as you can see that initially, the speed was at 800. Now the speed is at 1000. So given that the flux is remaining the same, so meaning to say on this condition, you can even cancel the flux one and the flux because they are the same. So with this, we can calculate our E2 by substituting, we are given E1 as 100 over E2 is equal to N1, which is 800 over N2, which is 1000. So this is what you're given. Uh, we can calculate our E2 from this part by cross multiplying both sides. That is, we can uh, calculate the generated EMF. That is E2 times 800. That is 800 E2 is equal to 100 times 1000. That is 100,000. So divide by 800 both sides, you're going to obtain uh, E2, which is the generated EMF. So that was going to be uh, the generated EMF uh, at 125 volts. So this is at uh, 125 volts. All right, so with the same condition, if you have to check 3.32, uh, it is also to calculate the generated EMF. But this time, if you have to consider, there are conditions that you are given, uh, which is the flux with the flux. So the flux is the one that you are given. This time, that is our flux two as 24. So that is 24 milliwebers with the speed of 900. So we are given the speed of 900 revs per minute. So if you had to check this time, it is different from what we had previously on 3.31, where we are told that the flux is going to remain the same. In this case, the flux is not the same. So meaning to say on the formula that we had, there are no adjustments to be made. We are just going to use our formula as it is. Remember last time we had to cancel the flux one and the flux two because they are the same. So in this case, they are not. So we're just going to substitute uh, E1, which is 100 over E2 that we want to calculate. Then e N1, that is the speed of 800. Then if you check the units, of the flux are the same, the milli webers. So just substitute the 20 as it is, all right? Then N2, that is 900 times uh, the flux two, which is 24, okay? Since these units are the same and we are dividing the same units in that case. So there's no need for you to uh, consider that part. All right, so you can even reduce this part that means we're going to have 100 over E2, which is equal to 20 over 27. So cross multiply, that is we can determine uh, the value of E2. So that is E2 times 20. 20 E2 is equal to 100 times 27, which is going to be 2,700. Uh, Just divide uh, by 20 from the product so that we can determine uh, the generated EMF at this condition, which was going to be 135 volts. So I think actually from the introduction that we had, we had a similar question, which was from the textbook like this. Now the question paper is just taking exactly as it is from your textbook. As you can see, uh, that is what we are given. It is actually a repetition, uh, six marks for that. All right, let us consider what we are given on 3.4. A long shunt compound generator. So take note, it is a long shunt compound generator that you are working with. So it is important that you do understand uh, the properties of a long shunt. Remember, in a long shunt, uh, the shunt field coils are connected across the series. Uh, that is, uh, we are connect they are connected. That is the series and the armature. So we've got something like this. Just going to have a sketch. Uh, of an uh, a long shunt generator. 
All right, so we're gonna have, uh, this is our shunt field. So the shunt field is going to be connected across the series field and the armature. So we are going to have a series field, all right, with the armature. That is the condition of a long shunt. So you have to know the difference that we are given uh, between the two. Uh, if you are given uh, for the compound, which is a long shunt and a short shunt. For a short shunt, we are going to have our coils, which is the shunt field connected directly across the armature. So you see it will be connected directly to the armature, but in this case, it will be parallel. Uh, or, uh, this is uh, to the series and the armature. All right, so that is, like I said, we have got the shunt and the armature with the series field. Remember, it's a generator. A generator is always supplying the current, which is the load current at a condition where we have got the voltage, uh, the power output. All right, so these are the conditions that you're going to have. Uh, the input power at this side, we're going to have our input power. All right, so that is the condition, guys. Remember your armature resistance, uh, the generated uh, EMF, and we've got our series field. So let's see what you're given them. So they are saying the load, it supplies a load current of 60 amps. So we are given this load current, uh, 60, uh, that is 60 amps. It has an armature resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. We're also given uh, the armature resistance of 0 0.1 ohms, the series field resistance, which is our series field resistance as uh, 0 0.025. So this is 0 0.25, which is the series field uh, resistance, okay? Then with a shunt field of 60 ohms, so this part of the shunt field, we are given this as a 60, as a 60 ohms, okay? And the generated EMF is 248. This is E, the generated EMF, not the voltage, the terminal. No, we need, the question is find the terminal voltage, which is this part. We need the terminal voltage V. Okay. We actually consider that this is a generator. And uh, from the generated EMF, uh, equation considering that we are dealing uh, with a shunt and it's a long shunt. From the connections that we are given, we can see that the current is supposed to be supplied from the armature part, which is here. So you're going to have the current and uh, this current is going, which, which is the series. So it is the, actually the same as the armature current that you're given because it's the same part that we are working with. And in this case, it's going to branch according to your Kirchhoff's law, other current into the shunt and the remaining current to the load. All right. Like I said, from the generated EMF, this is what you need to take note with a, a generator. The generated EMF, which is E, is equal to the terminal voltage. Okay. Plus, in this case, we are going to consider the armature current affecting the armature. That is what we are given in this case. So we are going to have this armature current times the resistance that is affecting the armature. So this part here, it is the resistance of the armature. Everything that is affecting the armature. Remember that the, the series current, field current, and the armature current are the same. So this represents the resistance of everything that is affecting your armature, which is in this case, our RAC is representing the armature resistance and the series field resistance connected together. That is what I'm trying to say in that case. So if you understand this formula here as, uh, 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 as this formula, then you can even manipulate, substitute into this. But what we need is this V, so we're gonna make it the subject. All right, so if we are to make it the subject, that means it was gonna be E minus the armature current 
times RAC, which is equal to V. So that means V is equal to E minus the amateur current times. What we are going to have, like I said, this is the resistance of the armature, which is everything that is affecting the armature circuit. So there is the armature resistance, and there is also the series field resistance. These two there are to be combined. So the question is, are we having this? Yes, we've got the E, we're given. The armature current, we do not have. So we are going to need the armature current, the armature resistance, and the series field are there. So from these calculations, how can we obtain the armature current? That is the only missing part that we do not have. All right. So let us consider what we are given in this case. Remember that the armature current and the series field are the same. And in this case, if you are to consider that the series field, which is our armature current, is the one that is supplying, according to Kirchhoff's law, it is the one that is entering this junction. It gives the shunt current, and it gives the load current at the end. So it means it is the sum of the load current and the shunt. The load current we do have, but we do not have the shunt current. But we can calculate the shunt because the shunt it is affected by the voltage, the terminal voltage, and this shunt. So it means in that case, it was going to be an equation. Okay, let's see what we're going to have here, guys, because we do not have this V, but the shunt it was supposed to be like this. The shunt, it was supposed to be the terminal voltage divided to the shunt field. This is what you're supposed to have uh, on your normal formula. But we do not have this V. It is the one that we need to calculate here, remember. So we are going to have this in terms of V when it is like this. We have got our shunt resistance, which is 60. So in this case, guys, it was going to be a limit we are, we are going to be limited because we do not have the v we can we cannot calculate this so meaning to say we were going to have at the end our amateur current which is the one that is equal to the series field as the load current we have got our load current which is 60 plus the shunt current the shunt current which is v over 60 so we cannot calculate this one we cannot calculate this. Uh, as we can see, it is an unknown value. So you can even combine this. You can leave it like this. You can combine. Uh, remember, from your mathematics, this is same as over 1. So you can even find the LCD of 1 and 60, which is 60. 60 divided by 1, that is 60 times 60, which is 3,600 uh, plus 60 divided by 60, that is 1 times V which is V. So as we can see, the amateur current can be given in terms of V. So it's not going to be a problem because it is the one that we need also to calculate here. So it means we are going to have an equation in this case in terms of the V that we want to calculate. So V is equal to E, the generated EMF of 248, minus the amateur current, which is the one that we are given of 3,600 plus V over 60 like this. So this year, there is a single term like this, which is going to multiply the amateur resistance plus the series field. So that is the condition that we are having in that case. So if you are to consider in that case, uh, we are going to have this. All right, so let us consider here. Okay, that's 0, 0,1 uh, for the armature. That's we've got 0, 0,1 plus the series field. Remember, that was uh, 0, 0,025. 0, 0,025 like this. So this is what we are having. So as you can see, we have substituted uh, what we are given. This is the amateur current here. So we can even combine this into a single term. That's V is equal to 248 minus. So it's up to you the way that you are going to solve thereafter. Uh, it's actually 
uh, in your hands, like uh, the way that you are going to solve uh, thereafter. Let us just combine this first. So this is same as 3600 plus V over 60 like this. All right. So this is going to multiply the resultant of these two if we add. So that was going to be 0, uh, 0,125. Okay. So that's 0, 0,125. So if you consider this, this is same as over one. It is same as over one like this. So meaning to say V is equal to 248. So the 0, 0,25 in this case is going to multiply this value that you're given this part here as it is. So how are we going to multiply? You can consider, guys, this is, uh, remember, from your fractions. If you are given this part here, that is same as A plus B over C, which is A over C plus B over C. You can even separate. So meaning to say this, we can separate the negative 0, 0,125 multiplies this one as it is. It also multiplies this one as it is. Okay, let me bring the calculator, explain what I'm trying to say here. So this is already the negative is there. So we're going to consider negative uh, 0, comma. All right, let me change my calculator back to the normal mode. It was because I was using this in uh, another calculation before. All right, so this is the normal mode. So let's 0, comma, 1, 2, 5. So it's already having a negative, this one. So it's going to have a negative like this. That's 1, 2, 5 times. So you're going to multiply the 3,600, this one, over 60. 3,600, this one, over 60. I have already taken the negative there. 3,600 over a 60 like this. So that will be negative uh, 7,5. So that's negative 7,5. So you do the same thing, V over 60 to times minus this. So you're going to use a minus there. Uh, minus 0, 0,25, then you're going to multiply uh, V over three six, V over 160, so it's same as 1 over 60 like this. So that will be minus 0 point, as we can see. I'm just going to take it to three decimal place. Like at, I'm going to consider these three digits, 0, 028. So that's minus... 0, 0,00208 having a V. Remember, there's a V there. So it's going to have a V like this. Okay. So this is where you are. And you need to consider the like terms in this case. Okay. So you're going to consider the like terms, transpose this to the other side where the V is. So it is going to add on this other side. It was a minus. So it is going to be a plus. So meaning to say we are going to have 1, 0, 0, 2, uh, 0, 8 v which is equal to these two. They are subtracting. Okay, so that is 240 minus 7, 5. That is going to give us 240, 5. All right, remember what you need is to calculate the voltage. And with this equation, we can calculate our voltage. Uh, divide both sides. So you're going to divide uh, both sides by 1,00208. And this was going to give us uh, the voltage. So it's not about um, the this equation solving. It's about the formulation of the question that you're given. So it was going to give us 239,99 and so on, which is going to approximate to 240, uh, 240 volts. So these are the typical questions that you might be given where you are not going to have the amateur current direct as you are used to. You formulate an equation with the amateur current in terms of what you're supposed to calculate in terms of the voltage that you need. Substitute into the formula. So this is like the general EMF equation that you're going to have when dealing with uh, our circuits. So this RAC is simply representing the resistance affecting the armature. So in our armature part, there are two things to be considered. 
the series field and that resistance of the armature. That's why we have to add because they're in series. And in a series connection, we understand that the current is the same. So the armature current and the series field current is the same. And this is the current being supplied to the circuit. So it's gonna be uh, transferred another current uh, to the shunt field, another current to the, uh, to the load. That is the way that you're given. So by calculating this, even if the question needed you to calculate the armature current, then you're going to substitute the V that you calculated here, then you can obtain uh, the numerical value of uh, the armature current. But in this case, it was just to calculate uh, the terminal voltage. So it's not always that you're going to be given direct questions, like direct questions. Sometimes they need you to formulate these questions in this manner. Uh, so that is it for our DC machines. We shall have more questions to come uh, from Mezzone African Motives till we meet again.